day two looking for William Nolan Bass brings us back over to Waco, Texas, where on the hunt we accidentally found a vehicle that's associated with aggravated robbery. At this moment in time, we don't know if anybody's inside. It's currently full of mud, but this is one episode. We're gonna take you back to the beginning on where they started right now. William Nolan Bass. Bass was last seen driving his 1977 tan and brown two-door Chevrolet Caprice with a Texas license plate number C82MRB in Mel Bellmead, Texas on October 21st, 2000. He was on Highway 84 near Loop 340 at the time of his disappearance. Bass left his residence at 9 a.m. He was headed to Waco, Texas to have his vehicle inspected and purchased with new tags. He never arrived at his destination and has not been heard or seen from again. His vehicle has never been recovered either. The investigators believe Bass could have had a stroke on the day of his disappearance and may have developed amnesia, or possibly he could have even been carjacked. His case remains unsolved. So we're rolling up to that pond that I was just talking about, which is over at, just down the road. And this is gonna be the closest one within a quarter mile of his house. The thing is, and it's not this one, it's down like another uh, 300 yards. And that one's really shallow. The thing is, is until we put eyes on it, I don't know if he has a fence there. I don't know if there was a fence there in 2000. leave town though I just want to make sure that we cover every possible pond and location that we don't rule anything out if this doesn't work out then we're gonna jump back over into Waco and start searching more on the uh, Brazos River as well so I've got the pond is right here in question and his house was right down here So we have no fence going up into it. What I don't like about it is that with Nolan driving slow and catching an edge, he's not gonna make it up there, in my opinion. Here, go ahead and stop right here. So currently, this guy's not home. Jerry's over getting, um, went over to his shop to find out. But let's see if this is, appears to be big and open and deep enough. Yeah, that can be deep enough. I'm just having a hard time. I mean, this is the closest one to his house, but I'm having a hard time accepting that he's gonna be coming up over this berm. But it is the closest one to his house. So we're waiting on for, for uh, permission right now. Once we get that permission, we'll go ahead and search it. So to, to make it in here and out there, I mean, you gotta be doing 60 plus. No, I, I get it. That's why I was telling Carson I'm having a hard time with this one because of the berm. But it is closest to his house. Where does this go? Just right here, just two ponds. Here's the thing too. I don't know who his buddies were. What if Eugene was his buddy and he came over to say hi to him and he just <whistles> came up, had a stroke, ended up and he ended up in here. We have that possibility as well. That would that would at least bring him up the driveway. I mean, I, I, I would say it, his, it would be a possibility if the berm wasn't here. 
And if it, it, even if he came in the driveway, he just you have to get out like forty something feet. Yeah, Carl float in there. Uh, that is too shallow. I guess maybe if it's deeper, at the time. Yeah. Remember, his his property actually connects to this property, so Nolan's property is right on the back of this one. So he could be buddies with him. Needed something, needed a tool or whatever. How steep that is back there on that corner, I don't see it there. Here's definitely, uh, if, you're, if your foot stays on the accelerator, here you can make it up here. Yeah. The second the, a tire hits the edge of this, it's gonna turn it. So you have to like really hold the steering wheel and stay on the accelerator. But if this is, if he does for whatever reason make it over and the water is higher, he, and the water's deep out there, he, he could be, it's possible. So it comes up, which, which you can see on Google as well. You see how it comes up through there? And then it gets deeper over here. Like it used to be separated almost, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. and, and, you, and when you pull up Google Maps, you can see that as well, when it gets a little, a little bit lower. But yeah, you have this big hole that's here. Until we get on it, we actually don't know how to do we just put the boat in. All right. Let's see if we can get a permission. Hey, what's going on, Jerry? Uh, not much. I can't find him. There's nobody here at the shop either, so I don't know. He's, a, he's been a good neighbor. I don't know him very well, but he kind of stays to himself. Works most of the time over his bus shop. All right. Whatever you think. I yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and pop it. So, I mean, you knocked on the door and nobody was uh, here. I mean, there's two cars in the driveway. Is he married? Uh, you know, somebody told me the other day that his wife had passed away. But, yeah, he's married. And got, I, I think he's got kids. So I, huh. I hadn't seen him in a good while. He, he don't ever come by my house. He goes the other way to come to town. So, I just don't ever see him. All right, no worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll try knocking on the door one more time, and then uh, we'll, we'll start getting the boat out. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll be back over a few minutes. I'm leaving Mark right now. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you. All right. All right. So, is there any other ponds here? Mm -mm. This is the only. This is the last pond that we've got in the area. I was looking all over last night. Like we covered all of the other ones yesterday. What is your thought? I mean, my thought is. I mean, I I, I do think. It going into Waco is absurd. I mean, it's just like a like a complete fumble last dish effort, and I I do like in a sense feel it's a waste of time. What about if he went that way? That's what I'm saying. So but I talked to the family about it. The spot that way, or the only other place is towards uh, Mahia, Mahia, Mahia. I mean, I don't. I just I I, I feel like we'd be better off not going to Waco, but Waco would be like just a last ditch effort, but Jacob's there. So, I mean, if we can search anything else, I think we'll be, I mean, we, we've done a lot and there's just really nothing else logically to do. Right. Because it's like, it, you're opening up the entire state. I don't know. Let me go knock on the door and see if they're there. I think they're there. I think he probably just woke them up. All right, sounds good. Looks like they let their dog out. I guess nobody's here. I'm gonna knock on this other door. There's, uh, nobody's home. So I knocked on both houses that are there and no one's here. It's only gonna take us a few minutes to search this, so. Let's get at it. Let's get in and out. And I mean, we are kind of working with the neighbor, so it's he seems to think that his neighbor's hospitable to a certain aspect. But we'll keep an eye out, and if he rolls up, we'll introduce ourselves very kindly, and hopefully nothing will come of it. Our intentions are well, so it's it's fine. Even the doggy doesn't care. He's just laying there. So give us no one's car. Let's find it. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but it would make sense, you know? Kind of in a hindsight aspect, it would definitely make sense. Dropping down here. 
And it's coming back up real quick, and it's gonna drop back down. Not here either. Dang it. Yeah, everyone was searching. I want it to be the one. I'm gonna give Jerry the answers he's been looking for. Okay, 12 feet deep, but nothing. Well, we're gonna keep it going throughout the day, Jerry. I'll keep you updated. Okay. If we run into anything else. Appreciate you, Joe. Hey, absolutely. All right. Well, we'll chat later today, regardless. I'll let you know. Okay, so thanks. I know it's been covered. Yeah, appreciate you coming Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Jerry. This is right in the triangle of everything that we are interested in. Drove on the side of the road because he used to be a mail carrier. We're just thinking he ended up in a, in a pond somewhere. So seeing if we can uh, take 15 minutes and put a boat on your water and do some sonar and see if by chance you have a car in your uh, pond here. Jacob put in at East Brazos Park where three days prior is that's where we found Stephanie Torres and it, logically you know after searching everything we have you know the Brazos River we just kept coming back to that as our only valid place to search if we're going to continue this search so that's where Jared Jacob started excuse me this morning and that's what he's been doing while we've been searching that so now we're heading over to East Brazos to where the river is, where Jacob has confirmed to me he already has two or three more targets near a bridge. So we're gonna go over there, we're gonna end up putting our boats in, we're gonna continue scanning the river with Jacob to see if we can't find anything. So we're definitely probably gonna end up getting in the water and identifying multiple targets, which at this point, you know, anything we can do to further search on this case, it possibly is gonna bring us one step closer to solving it. I feel like we've cleared all of the country, you know, ponds, lakes, little side canals. So the only, only thing left to do is to go clear these bigger waterways. What are your thoughts on where this is at? Because it's pretty drawn out. We've, we've gone over all of the normal investigation tactics and routines that we normally cover and we've come up with nothing and you know where we're going from here. What, what, what do you think about where we're at right now? I think there's only three explanations as to where he could be. One, it's either suicide. He wasn't suicidal. You know, he was going out just on his day to get a mission. So we have to rule out all suicide locations. All boat ramps don't make sense. Accidents. Accidents is the most plausible, makes the most sense. He has a stroke, he bears off and over. He drives like a snail. Doesn't make sense for him to go over. The next thing that's in my mind that I don't really want to say would be that something bad happened to Nolan. You know? Yeah. He got caught up in the wrong person, not the wrong crowd, was just at the wrong place, at the wrong time, and then something could have happened to him. That, 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 that's a fair assessment. Anytime you're dealing with somebody who is missing, there's always suspected foul play. I mean, people just don't go missing for good reasons. Just like the same way we don't find car, there's no car underwater for a good reason. I mean, it, 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 no matter what, it's criminal activity for a vehicle being underwater. pretty much downtown Waco, right next to University Drive. Whole lot of access to the river right here where we're at. All right, we're casting 75 feet in either direction. We did a lot yesterday on the first day, even though we had two days scheduled for this search. And I, you know, I, I just didn't feel like complete 
without coming back to the Brazos River and, and at least trying to turn something up here. It, it's, it's a little bit far away from where Mr. Bass was last seen, but all we can do is try, you know? All we can do is try, Carson. Really clean bottom. So you guys can see right here, like how clean it is. So anything is gonna pop right up. You're not gonna miss anything on this. Over here, look at the live scope, beautiful. So it's, no matter what, a tree, a boulder, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb versus a, a river bottom that has a lot of growth and a lot of different objects. It's, this is picture perfect when it comes to us searching for, especially a, a vehicle underwater. Jacob is right next to this other road on the other side where there's a parking lot. And it's all a down slope into here. So this is all a really good search area here. We're coming underneath the bridge. I got a real good picture of the, uh, the bridge columns. You can see the bridge columns really defined. Lots of trees. So when we come to a bridge, we can't just go keep continuing down the shore like we have been coming down. We gotta check the entire bridge because now that's a road that goes over the water. Can something come off that bridge? Absolutely. You can see where the guardrail up there has been kind of damaged the railing already. And Carson, let me ask you, what do we, what do we know about railings and guardrails? Like what what are, what have we found out in all these investigations? Do you do you do you know my do you know the answer I'm looking for? Yeah, you know sometimes uh, construction workers they'll see a busted out guardrail, they won't think anything of it. You know they're out there on call, their boss sent them there, like go fix this guardrail. They go out and fix it, and then nothing gets said. Right, absolutely. It's not, not, nothing is ever questioned. Right. You know, sometimes it is. I've heard of stories where people have gone off of bridges and through railings and guardrails and they find a car. But as we know firsthand, a lot of times that doesn't happen. A lot of times that doesn't happen and the workers, uh, the, the supervisors are putting in a work order or somebody's called in a damaged piece of property and the workers are coming out. They're not questioning it. It's not necessarily their fault. It's just, they're, they're basing the fact that they got sent a work order that that had already been dealt with by either their supervisors or the police. But I urge all public workers that replace railings and guardrails to thoroughly check to see if it's been investigated because there, something damaged that guardrail. Whoa, that's definitely an old school car. Wow, hold on. So we found a car right underneath this bridge. And it really looks like an old school car. Like this is this really could be what we're looking for. It looks like it's been down here for, I, I can't quite tell, but it is kind of silted in really good. So who knows? So we're gonna drop this here and then we're gonna go get a good perspective of what we have. Did we just find Nolan? It looks good on side scan too. Looks really good on side scan. Looks really good on live. We're gonna have to bring the dive trailer over here and we're gonna have to get into the water. I'm gonna get into the water and... Probably dipped over, floated down, and then floated to just underneath it, it, It's possible that that railing has been damaged for 20 years. It's also possible, we know as well, cars go over those railings without even touching them because of just a weird accident and a weird tumble. Did you find I did it. I, I, I have a very boxed old school car right down here under the bridge. Um, so if you want to bring the camper and trailer um, back down towards the bridge, cross over, there's a little parking lot right here, like right in front of me. Okay. You can pull right down into, and this is definitely a very, very old school car. Like it's, it, it looks like a box Caprice. All right, sounds good. Yep. It looks like a four door, but this back window 
is smaller and you know this much over is not actually window right and you'll, you'll see it for yourself So that's what we're looking for. Got it. Let's go scan it and see. If not, we might solve a different uh, case today too. You never know. Almost looks like a two-door, doesn't it? Yeah, no, beautiful images. I don't think it's a Capri. I think it's a Capri. I think it's a 90s model. So while I can say, hmm, could be a two-door, I really think it is a four-door, but also more of a, like I said, 90s model. Yeah, it's a four-door. See that? Four-door, not two-door, in my opinion. Feedback, like I'm not making out anything he's saying. Mercury Grand Marquis, big body. You have both plates off the vehicle. All of the windows are up on it. Every single one, there's some rear end damage, minor, to the trunk. The two passenger side windows are down about two inches. The driver's side windows are completely snug up, okay? Uh, obviously, I didn't, at that point, I'm not opening any doors. No other damage, all four wheels. So we'll possibly call that one in. Get an officer down here and find out the story of this one. Um, I actually have no idea where I'm at. Uh, are you able to ping my uh, cell phone? Yeah, give me one moment. Um, it looks like you're on Waco Drive, like by a river. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Crossing over water. Yep. Okay, what's going on? Hey, uh, so we're the divers that found Stephanie Torres a couple days ago, and uh, we're con okay. we're continuing our investigation in the area, looking for a miss another missing person. We have located. Okay. We've located another vehicle and all the windows are up. It is not the vehicle we're looking for, but I do have a plate. And if you or an officer can run the plate number for us, make sure it's not connected to anything. Okay, I can run the plate, but I can't give you any information in regard to it. I mean, other than, you know, ask to see if it's stolen or not. Go Char ahead. Charlie X-Ray 6. Ta okay. Tango 704. 
call in one moment, okay? Yep. Okay. I, what I can do is I can get this in is we can get officers to verify this, but again, I can't give you any information regarding the vehicle itself. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, if we can have somebody come down because okay. we don't know if anybody's inside, so. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Thank so you. We'll Thank you. How's it going, officer? You guys call, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, how are y'all going to get pulled out? Say again? You guys going to pull them out? Do you, uh, do you want us to pull it out? Or do you want to take control of it? What would you like to do? Okay, so you guys need a tow truck. What, do y'all yeah. know y'all have the vehicles pinpointed? Yeah, so yeah. right One where the buoy is at? Right where the vehicle is at, to, to, to get to the top of the vehicle, you're looking at five feet down. It's okay. really, really easy to pull out. But yeah, if, um, if you have tow truck, we'll hook it for you and we'll have it out in 30 minutes once they're here. Okay. All right, we'll do it. Let me go and let me make some phone calls, okay? Awesome, okay. sounds good. Yeah, we have quite a few missing people with grand marquees. So far, the license plate doesn't match. I have one, though, with no license plate. Like, right now, they're just not saying. Like, no number. Like, like they're not saying it's stolen. They're, it's they're either not saying because it's connected to something, or they're not saying just because they're just, they just want to help us because they know exactly who we are. And yeah. All right, so far, I've found three grand marquees with missing people. None of them have license plates match up. Right. Hey, he's just barely hanging on. Made it robbery. In 2013. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So we got a we got a truck that's coming out that's going to tow it, okay? And uh, our crime scene tech is going to come out to ensure nobody's inside the vehicle. Perfect. And perfect. We'll, we'll get it to the, hey, I, the impound lot. I, I just want to say thank you for like this is super you know, taking quick. it serious. And, oh yeah. I mean, we, there's there's sometimes we come into this and we're like, oh, we'll just leave it. Like <laughs> you, you don't know you don't know if somebody's in it or not. You know? No, yeah, no. Yeah. It's, that's not our, that's right. not this so, department. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get suited back up. Okay. I'll go back down, I'll rig it. Yeah, that way yeah. when the tow truck gets here, it, they won't have to wait on clean. anything. All we got to do is hook up the tow truck. Or yeah. Tow yeah. To date, for everything that we've ever pulled out of the water, we've only ever had one accidental find. Now, based upon the number of vehicles that we have pulled out, I think there's just a numbers game and only a matter of time before we do find and stumble upon an accidental, hey, we just solved another missing persons case that we didn't even know about. We don't know if there's gonna be somebody in this one or not, but that's why we do it when the windows are up. Make sure we handle it with care. We're gonna bring that vehicle out right now. When he comes back over, we're gonna put this on the front of his boat. Yeah. And then we're gonna coil it up, but we're gonna need another 30 feet is what we're gonna do for this game plan. And we'll coil it up on the boat, and then he'll just, as he backs up, he'll lay the line, so that way he's not dragging it, he's just laying it. Yeah. So we got quite a bit here, I don't know how much we got. Yep. So let me start. All right, sounds good. Thank you. I can't get that big J hook through the, through the holes. And it's bottomed out. I have one wheel dug out. The other wouldn't make it around to the other side. So 
we'll pull on the one wheel and if we can free it up and it works it works if it, we can free it up and it doesn't i can then re-rig it i wonder how many comments i'm going to get saying i should floor it right now <laughs> at least seven <laughs> All right, so you got the uh, buoy coming out of the water. That's where the 20 foot line is at. We have a 20 foot blue line. And then from the 20 foot blue line, we have two 10 foot J hooks that are attached to each of the wheels. This thing is completely filled to the brim. You have to pop doors and pull the uh, water pump out. It's all downhill from here. It's gonna ride out on this front end. bag of concrete is 80 so it's like that tall that wide that long an extra 80 pounds for every one of those so if you put a hundred of them in there you got an extra 8,000 pounds so right now they're probably lifting whoa a good 14,000 pounds that's why they're not that's why they keep popping these chains they can't get a good hook Just to, just to confirm what they're doing now, so they use that one to lift it up so you can get some good yes, J-hook attachments, and yeah. now you're gonna double line with the big one, or just single line? Uh, now, now we're gonna be single line with the big one, which is more than enough. We just had a big boulder under there. Okay. We could get nothing under there, plus it being rear wheel, the front the front is like independent suspension sort of, you know? Well, and there's like six to 8,000 pounds of mud inside. Correct, so it's, 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 it's not as easy as it looks. Like this thing is very heavy. I like, wonder what the actual crime or charges i mean we know what the charges were aggravated robbery does that mean that a knife was used does that mean a gun was used did they steal this car in it was it a carjacking or did they use this vehicle in the crime of aggravated robbery like did they go rob a bank or a convenience store i wish we could get more information on that one
anybody's in it. Right. No, no. So, it was just a, just, it's just a stolen car. That's yeah, all yeah. we got right now. You just open the doors, blow all the mud out, and see if any bones come up. So even, yeah, and that's kind of my fear. If there is, I'm kind of worried about, like, so I'm, when I think fire hose, that's a strong spray. They, they, can control. they can control. Okay. They, they can control. They can control. Yeah. And, and, and also, if we cut the doors off mm -hmm. and we tilt the car from that side, it'll all just slide out, which is probably what we'll do. How about we just do that? I would recommend it. Yeah, so we'll cut the doors off and then we'll tilt the car up and then it'll just slide what's in there out in a controlled manner right there. Perfect, perfect. That would be ideal. Appreciate y'all. Y'all helped us close another one. You know, you guys have been great you know, to work with. So, said. hey, I have really good news for you guys as well. We're actually leaving the town and the county tonight, so you don't have to worry about <laughs> you don't have to worry about us calling you tomorrow, all right? <laughs> all right, and then rehooking it back up. So right now we have Waco Fire who is cutting off the doors as well as the B pillars and the forensics is going to go through there and see if we have any human remains inside. Right now we don't yet have those answers. Waco has been incredible. I am really impressed with them. I mean, you got Marissa down here today with forensics. You got Waco Fire. You got PD. The moment that he came down, like he didn't even ask who we are, or, you know, or names or anything. It's just like, oh, let me get you a tow truck. Yeah. Like that was like the first thing. 
Well, other than a cell phone, forensics did not find any other evidence in the car. There are no human remains, and we have answers today as to where William Nolan Bass is not for his family. We do wish that we could solve all of them. Unfortunately, we cannot, but we do have another car out of the rivers and out of the environment. If you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe because it helps the algorithm to spread awareness of what is it we're capable of in helping other families for free in search of their lost loved ones. That's it for now. We'll see you on the next case. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.